Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update. I hope you guys are doing really well. And uh, in this video, we will be going straight into what is happening out there. We've got our active tropical cyclones, as well as that area highlighted that we should watch for development as we head into this coming week. And GFS has been hinting at seeing something in the Caribbean. So we're going to be taking a look at that as well. Now, before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't done so already and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. Alright, so let's kickstart things looking at the Caribbean region as per usual, and we can see that there isn't a whole lot happening, but there is some thunderstorm activity near the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and also offshore of Cuba. We also see a bit of convection over in parts of the Lesser Antilles, St. Kitts, going to Antigua, Montserrat, Guadeloupe, uh, Dominica so you guys can let me know what's been happening in your area also in some spots in central america but overall there isn't anything too crazy happening across the region southeastern islands including trinidad and tobacco remain pretty dry and then in terms of rainfall activity today maybe some scattered showers and thunderstorms across northern islands but then, uh, but then as we head to the windward islands going to the abc islands trinidad tobago uh, barbados reduced rainfall activity maybe the most to be in a passing shower but it seems as though it is going to be another hot and dry day. And then as we head to parts of Central and Northern South America, we could see some uh, more substantial rainfall activity across these areas. Uh, parts of Guyana going to Suriname, not as much going over into French Guiana. And uh, heading up to the Bahamas, there'll be some showers popping up here and there. Similar story for the Turks and Caicos Islands, but again, likely to be a pretty hot and sunny day. And there could be some substantial activity across Florida. Now, as as we head to the uh, Atlantic Basin, here we've got our active system. So as I said, Lee is moving into parts of New England as well as uh, Atlantic Canada, bringing with it some periods of heavy rainfall, those strong winds, even that storm surge, which may be inundating some coastal areas. So uh, fortunately, it is not much stronger than it is now, and it has become a post-tropical cyclone. So it has made that transition. And then uh, as we take a look at our newly formed tropical depression, here we have it. Tropical Depression 15 and it is not looking the best right now, but maybe as we head to later today It will become Nigel. So the name Nigel is pending to be used and then as we take a look at the NHC's cone forecast Here we can see that it is no longer expected to become a major hurricane which is what the M, the letter M, represents. Just as how we're seeing the H here, uh, that is representing a hurricane generally, but M stands for major hurricane, S is tropical storm. But it is still expected to intensify into a hurricane, maybe maxing out at Cat 2 status. And so uh, that is expected as we're going to be heading into the middle of the week. And we're seeing this kind of consistency that this is going to be remaining well to the east of Bermuda when it is going to be passing by. And that would be some really good news because then impacts would be extremely minimal in the island. But uh, the takeaway, we're likely to have a tropical storm as we head into later today, which might eventually intensify into a hurricane. Cane. Nothing crazy expected from it. And even if there was, uh, it is not currently a problem for anyone. And now let's go ahead and talk about this highlighted area. So the formation chance is up to 30%, slight increase since uh, yesterday. And so that tropical wave is likely to uh, emerge off the African coast as we head into the middle of the new week. Once it does so, we're likely to see some development. And with all of these other storm systems, Lee, Margo, what will be Nigel making their way out that a uh, high pressure system will get that chance to reinforce itself and it is what steers systems to the west the stronger high steer systems more on a westward track and that is when they become a problem for the caribbean and as i've been talking about as of lately that seems to be uh, what could happen with this new tropical wave which will emerge as we head into next week so we'll definitely have to keep watch for that system and uh, i mean models have been picking up on it especially ensemble uh, tracks coming from the GFS, the Euro, other models as well. And so let's go ahead and talk about it. Going on to the Euro Ensemble members, this goes out to the next 10 days, out to Tuesday, the 26th of the month. There you can see that expected track of uh, what will become Nigel. You can see that most of these members keep the system well to the east of Bermuda. But if you're in Bermuda, you still want to keep watch. As I've been saying, there are bound to be some shifts here and there in the expected track of it. But take a look at this we've got these models picking up on that next system 
that will be making its way off the African coast. Also, a new set of members there picking up on something else. Very interesting. And then we go on to the GFS and Saba members also out to 10 days. We can see that some of these mo a lot of these members want to take the system into the Caribbean. And that seems like a pretty a possible outcome once that high pressure reinforces itself. So that is something that would not be surprising to see. So we definitely have to keep our eyes out there as we're going to be heading into the latter part of the month. And also, notice over in the Western Caribbean, there isn't a whole lot of agreement on this, but GFS has been rather consistent about something developing in the western part of the basin, coming from all that activity that takes place over in Central America and the Eastern Pacific, and makes its way up to the north. A similar urgent spot as Idalia uh, several weeks ago, so this would be very interesting to see. And I mean, the Caribbean is very conducive now in terms of the sea surface temperatures because we haven't really had anything move across the region to really absorb that energy or take advantage of it so it's just been sitting there temperatures up to 30 31 degrees celsius maybe even 32 in some spots who knows but it's been very warm out there and with other environmental conditions being conducive anything that moves in will take advantage of that and even rapidly intensify so again we haven't had anything much in the caribbean and so if the system should make its way in with other environmental conditions being conducive those are level winds and also uh, a decent amount of moisture then we would definitely see some intensification take place and the same story goes for the western gulf of mexico it's very warm over there and there hasn't really been anything in the gulf it's really just been italian as a major cyclone. This hurricane season over in the far eastern part of the Gulf of Mexico. And so guys, let's go ahead and look at this dry air map. And here we can see that there is some dry air in some spots across the Caribbean and also coming off the African coast in association with the Saharan air layer. There we have our depression out there and the, uh, that little blob right there is in association with the tropical wave. It's just not marked for development right now. But again, that next one will be making its way off heading to the middle parts of of the coming week and so that is pretty much what i wanted to share with you guys in this update so again we've got our tropical cyclones out there we've got lee which is um in its last days right now really it has become a post-tropical cyclone but inducing some inclement weather conditions across parts of northeastern north america margo is out there still as a tropical storm and she'll be loitering around for some time before finally making her way out and dissipating we've got our new tropical depression tropical depression number 15 which is expected to become nigel eventually a hurricane but a major hurricane is no longer anticipated and it could pass well to the east of bermuda bringing very minimal impacts to the island however we still should keep watch for any changes in the forecast track and then we've got that area highlighted where we're likely to see some development of a tropical wave as it makes its way from the african coast headed into next week and that is pretty much it for now guys and so i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments i'll respond once i get the chance to do so and as always remember to be otherwise